thank you for helping us to improve our communities and help strengthen our youth and families living in Flint and Genesee County. At this time, I would like to bring up a few community residential voices um, so that they can just have a few minutes just to say how they have been working and how we need to continue to work together in community so that this change that we're seeing can continue to come forth. Hi, I'm Rhonda Bingo, and my son will, will be returning home um, in May from being um, incarcerated for five years. And had I not joined WOW and other outreach, community outreaches, I would not be in this space right now. So my uh, concern is helping others, uh, teens, um, before they get in trouble. So that was um, one of my part. Uh, reasons for connecting with the community and being connected and being uh, determined to be positive uh, to make the change. Me as a parent and to become a stronger community leader. So those were some of my reasons and without all of these people behind me and other uh, outreaches I wouldn't be here today and my son would not be um, getting out to a positive outlook so he won't be a return offender. With all these community people it helps me to grow and strengthen my mind so I can grow and strengthen his mind. Um, but without all this these leaders behind me and community outreaches, I would not have been able to do it alone. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Quincy Murphy and I'm the um, Executive Director of Urban Transformation Development, which is the former Garfield Bunch Community Service Corporation. And we've been working in this community trying to get youth off the streets for um, several years. Um, just recently we um, partnered with my community college community venture program where we served as service providers and Hopefully, um, a lot of the organizations that are standing behind me will um, tap into these different resources where we can provide some of youth employment for the young kids. What we've done in the past is we've adopted and um, leased Dewey Park for the three years to provide recreational programming and activities and cleanup projects in the um, park for um, kids in the community. Not only has we um, adopted Dewey Park, we um, is in the process of negotiating a bunch of school to turn into a community center to provide recreational activities and um, different service providers with different organizations and great groups like these that are standing behind me today. So we are doing things to be solution driven. We advise other people in the community to be more solution driven and be more critics and criticizing what the city ain't doing, but work in collectively with um, different groups like WOW and others to um, create change in the community. Thank you. Good afternoon, how y'all doing? <laughs> My name is Ken Dickerson, and uh, I was part of this problem that's plaguing the city right now 20 years ago. Now I'm part of the solution. I lost my son to senseless violence. Since then, me and my family, we working hard to fulfill the legacy of my son, Ken Jr. Uh, Thank you to the community for your role in reducing violence. My son's case is still unsolved, but I am confident that it will be solved soon. I got a nephew, Darius Robinson, lost his life too. We got some unsolved cases that we, you know, I'm confident that the police will solve them. I got some family members here with me now. And, uh, uh, <laughs> if I hadn't got involved, as Rhonda was saying, uh, wow, and community action, ceasefire, neighborhood without borders at all. I wouldn't be here today to thank mm -hmm. my wife. My mother is on her son, man. Mm -hmm. you know, thank you. We're going to keep it pushing until we make a change. Thank you. We also understand that there's community leaders on the front line, there's champions in the neighborhood, but then there's people who just think, Oh, I'm just volunteering. I'm just helping out. But those people, their roles are so significant also. Whether you give one hour a month, one hour a week, five hours a day, it all goes back to saving lives. And so there's a few community volunteers who are here today, um, Sister Cindy and some others. If you want to have just a few words to say anything, please feel free. Feel, please feel free to do so if you can just take a couple of moments. Hi, my name is Cynthia Ferguson, and we not only work with... Um, State police, we work with the children, getting them in big um, brothers, big sisters club, 
have all kind of opportunities for them to do things, to grow up, to see a different change in our, our community as we go along, to teach them. And they are our futures, and we need to do things more often with the young also, so they'll be led in a different direction than what the world is going to right now. Thank you. Um, my name is Robert LaShawn Taylor. I just came home from Michigan Department of Corrections. I did 33 years of prison. I've been in 1979, been out for about 17 months. I came out to my community because I see a lot of things in the newspaper. I talked to a lot of young men who came from Flint, Michigan for murder, robbery, and everything in prison. I talked to the brothers, why are they harming their brothers and sisters in the community? And they were just lost. And I came home, I made my mind up when I was in prison that I would come home, be a part of my community, and pay my community back by helping the youth of my community. Amen. And I feel that the source of solving a lot of our community problems is the brothers and sisters are incarcerated because they know what's going on in the community. And we need the brothers and sisters in prison to come out here and do a positive things and help us fight for the crimes in our community. Mm -hmm. That's, That's what I'm here for, and I'm a volunteer to help the youth and the elders in my community. Thank you. As you can see, these are everyday people making a great impact and truly making a difference. Oftentimes you hear people in the community say, oh, you know, my little, my little bit won't help much, won't do anything. But some people can go right out on the front line. Other people can make a pot of chili. Some people can uh, make some phone calls. Others can just give a hug or a warm smile. Every little bit helps to bring about this positive change. We didn't get to 30% reduction in crime and violence just because the police had more presence in the community. But we did it because we, as a community, collectively came together. And that's truly what's making an impact. Um, and we still have so much work to go. This is just, we're just at the tip of the iceberg. We still have so much more to go. So we can't go back to business as usual. We have to continue working just as hard as when we began two or three or four or five years ago. One life is too many. We don't want one person to lose their life to violence. As you can see, these young people here, everyone here has been impacted in one way or another. Whether they lost a son or daughter or sister or brother, a father or mother, a cousin, somebody in the neighborhood, that loss of life impacts us as a community and it impacts our families, as you can see. So at this time, Pastor Hawkins or Bob or Tendaji, we utilize a, a, a process called strategic doing. And for so long, we had just been talking, 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 meeting, 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 and couldn't really figure out why are we not getting to the action that we need. And one day, a friend of mine and ours named Bob Brown introduced the concept called strategic doing. So we no longer plan and just wait for things to manifest, but we actually plan and we um, provide our action-driven solutions and our assets to bring about a positive change. So if um, Pastor Hawkins, Tendaji, Bob, or Hubert have anything that you would like to say, please come forth as we begin to close this out. My name is Tendaji Ganges, and uh, you've heard the term strategic doing bandied about. I think it's important that we understand that we're not helpless in this. No member of this community is helpless. We all can band together to make certain that we are using the assets that we have. Not money, but the assets of personal commitment, the person uh, doing what we can do. And as we look at a board like this, these are not simply victims. This is lost potential. This is extreme, extreme example of lost potential beautiful human beings, young people who were going to make a contribution but have been snuffed out. Mm -hmm. That is a loss to all of us, not just the families that has lost them, but all the rest of us. So as we think about what is it that we can do, each one of us has a job to do to protect the legacy of the future by getting involved now and putting those assets that each of us has to work in saving this community, rebuilding this community, and investing the wealth of us. I'm here representing NCOBRA. I brought NCOBRA to Flint a number of years ago. I want to tell you what NCOBRA means. The National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America. Our illustrious person in a higher position in Washington, John Conyers, created it. And uh, it has done so much good across the country. I brought it to Flint about 15, 16 years ago. Since then, NCOBRA has partnered with CBOP, 
community-based organization partners and other groups across the city. We do work in COBRA uh, that's known to some people, but pretty much we do work and keep it quiet. We just like to work and do the work and get some results. Um, I would like to say uh, two things. One, when you bring oppression to a people, oppression causes a lot of damage to the persons that you are that are being oppressed and the persons that are the oppressors. And we see the results of that today. When there are no jobs, <coughs> when there is nothing to do, when there is oppression with paying your rent, paying consumers, paying water bills and so forth. And I mentioned at first no jobs to be able to do that. Then you have a type of oppression that the uh, people can't get past. You can't see an end to it. You can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And when that happens, it happens and devastates the whole community. And I do and will say that this community is still being a viable asset to the community, even though it is under a great suppression. Flint is being suppressed, and if it wasn't being suppressed so much with undue suppression, people would operate differently. You wouldn't be able to bring in crime <coughs> like it's here now. You wouldn't be able to have to fight against uh, drugs. And we don't manufacture drugs. Drugs is brought in for some kind of reason. They're made available readily to this community and we need to fight it on every level, which is being done. Second thing I'd like to say is, now is the day, now is the time, people, now is the time for us to stand up. If you are crippled, stand up. If you are lame, stand up. And stand up for a principle. Stand up for, you, for the ancestors that you have and live a good life for them and for the future of your children. I am within my right to say, Now's the time. Now's the time for the oppressed to be the top rung on the ladder. Thank you. <coughs> Jeff Hawkins, Pastor of Prince of Peace Baptist Church. At a community breakfast this morning, we're, we're having a community conversation on Friday. And there was a gentleman who was there. He said, well, Pastor, what I'll do, I'll take uh, some flyers, and I'm going to personally invite 10 people out to the community breakfast. What that says to me, and it's been stated already, whatever part you can play, play that part. Mm -hmm. Whatever you think you can do, do that part. This is just a representation of the many people who are now saying, you know what, we want our community to change for the better. And so I am not only encouraged by these individuals, but I'm encouraged <clears throat> by the many other individuals who's playing whatever part they can play to make their community a safer place, a better place, not, a, not only for them, not only for the elders, but for the children just as equal. And I do believe together we can make this thing happen. We can make this community whatever we want to be. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to all of these individuals. When it comes time to, um, to get out and go out into the community and address issues of violence and things of that nature, it can be very scary at times and it can be very difficult. But when you have soldiers and troops and concerned people like what you see here today and others that we don't even know anything about that's out in the neighborhoods, in the community, it just makes the job a lot easier. Um, at this time, I would like to introduce Gloria Rosenberg, and if she could come forth to talk about the quilt and to, <coughs> to tell everybody about what it is that we're doing jointly to bring about this change. And then we'll have our board chair to close us out. Hi, I'm Gloria Rosenberg, and this is one of the quilts from the Remember Me Quilt Project. The quilts, the intent of the quilts are, one, to memorialize the innocent victims of gun violence, and when the quilts are publicly displayed, um, we want to keep 
front and center in the minds and hearts of the public the need for change, the need for change to reduce the cycle of violence.